Hello friends, today we'll start preparation for the upcoming JIPMA nursing officer exam. These questions can also be useful for AIMS NORSET, ESI and other exams too. So we'll start preparing from today. We'll have important questions and sometimes small lecture topics also. So let's move inside. Welcome to Master Nurse. A double bubble sign in an x-ray is characteristic of which disease condition? A. Pyloric stenosis B. Duodenal atresia C. Hispunch disease D. Peptic ulcer The answer is B. Duodenal atresia A double bubble sign in a radiological examination example x-ray and sometimes in USG also what you would see is the dilatation of the duodenum and the stomach on either side of the vertebral column. So this is a classic radiographic manifestation of duodenal obstruction and the cause of this could be intrinsic such as a duodenal atresia, duodenal stenosis, duodenal web, anything affecting the duodenum or an extrinsic such as annular pancreas or rotational anomalies. So annular pancreas is something in which the extra tissue from the pancreas expands and covers the duodenum. So somewhere or the other there is a block in the duodenum that causes dilatation to the stomach and the duodenum. Question number two. A patient who has a sengstaken blackmore tube inserted experiences sudden dyspnea. Which one of the following action should the nurse take first? A. Start oxygen administration. B. Cut and remove the tube. C. Elevate the head end of the bed. D. Listen to the client's lung sounds. The answer. Cut and remove the tube. So first and foremost thing you should be knowing what is this Sengstaken Blackmore tube. The Sengstaken Blackmore tube is an emergency management tube that is used for stopping gastrointestinal bleed especially bleeding from the stomach and the esophagus so this tube has three ports on the outer side and two balloons in the inner side so this uh, procedure has to be used only when other methods are not working this should be the last or the final uh, intervention for gastrointestinal bleed so after insertion of this bleed, there are some complications that may happen. Example, necrosis of nose, throat, etc. It can also cause aspiration and it can cause dyspnea because of blockage in the tube. So immediately once the patient develops dyspnea, the first thing that the nurse has to do is cut and remove the tube. The technique that is used to place the tube is called balloon tamponade. Clumpy paralysis is caused as a result of the damage to dash a brachial plexus 3 cervical plexus c lumbar plexus d sacral plexus the answer is brachial plexus so clumpy paralysis is a rare type of birth injury that happens to the nerves around the newborn shoulder. So you should know what is a plexus. So plexus are group of nerves or a branch of nerves or blood vessels that happen to emerge from one particular place and supply to a big region. So there are important plexus in our body, the brachial plexus, cervical plexus, lumbar plexus and sacral plexus. So they supply to different parts of the body. For example, the cervical plexus supplies nerves to the head and the back and the brachial nerve supplies to scapula, chest and shoulders and the upper limbs and the same way the lumbar plexus to the back and lower part of the body and the sacral plexus too. So what happens during this clumpy paralysis is during the time of birth if it is a difficult uh, delivery for example some uh, complications during a vaginal delivery there may happen uh, they are, they are damage to the newborns shoulder etc so during this problem what happens is the brachial plexus gets damaged so because of this what happens is it affects the shoulder and the upper arm leading to paralysis so this is called the clumpy paralysis question 4 a 25 year old male client has been newly diagnosed with hypothyroidism and will take levothyroxine 50 microgram per day orally 
As a part of teaching plan, the nurse emphasizes that this medication dash. So what should the nurse explain as a priority? A should be taken in the morning. B may decrease the client's energy level. C must be stored in a dark container. D will decrease the client's heart rate. The answer is it should be taken in the morning. That is the priority because levothyroxine has side effect of insomnia. Taking it in the morning could prevent interfering with the client's sleeping pattern. So anytime levothyroxine prescribed, the patient has to take it in the morning. A client comes to the clinic for treatment of recurrent pelvic inflammatory disease, PID. The nurse recognizes that this condition most frequently follows which type of infection. So the question means that which infection can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease? A. Trichomoniasis B. Chlamydia C. Staphylococcus D. Streptococcus The answer B. Chlamydia So usually this chlamydial infection and sometimes Neisseria gonorrhea infection these infections can move upward from the uh, women's vagina or the cervix into the reproductive organs and cause pelvic inflammatory disease. Trichomoniasis is also a protozoan uh, sexually transmitted disease. Uh, it can rarely occur in non-sexual forms also by use of towels, toilets, sharing toilets etc. But mostly it is a sexually transmitted disease. So but that cannot uh, move into the uh, upper regions and cause uh, pelvic inflammatory disease. A nurse is taking care of a patient with DVT. He or she should be aware that the emboli may get lodged in dash. Answer A. Heart B. Lungs C. Liver D. Kidneys The right answer is lungs. So first you should know what is DVT. So DVT is deep vein thrombosis. This happens because of chronic bedridden patients. When patients legs have no activity, what happens is there is less pumping in the legs. So there is greater risk of developing a thrombus because the valves are inactive and the blood might get regurgitated from there and there is more risk for developing a thrombus. So this is called as deep vein thrombosis. So what happens during this disease is slowly the thrombus gets dislodged from the blood vessels in the legs. From legs it moves upwards along with the circulation it can get lodged in the lungs. So patient might look very normal in the beginning but suddenly they might have a respiratory collapse and fall. So this can also lead to death when left unnoticed. So what has to be done for this? The prevention of deep vein thrombosis is very important. The preventive measures are use of sequential compression device, an electronic device that can cause artificial compression to the calf muscles. And other method is giving physiotherapy to the lower limbs when patient is completely in bed rest or in a state of coma. Number three is use of stockings. The stockings can give some compression to the patient. Once it is developing, the treatment measures that can be done are administration of low molecular weight heparin. So these are the prevention and treatment measures. If treated well, it cannot lead to pulmonary embolism. It can be prevented. Question number 7. Which of the following stage of labor would the nurse assess for crowning? So the question is when would crowning begin? During which stage of labor? A. First stage B. Second C. Third stage D. Fourth stage The answer is B. Second stage So during the second stage what happens is when contraction begins the baby's head starts to enter into the cervix and here it starts emerging bit by bit during each contraction the head will start becoming visible so this occurs during the second stage of labor question 8 what should a nurse emphasize on while teaching breathing exercise for a client with chronic bronchitis a use chest breathing b use diaphragmatic breathing c use open mouth breathing d use deep inhalation breathing the answer 
use diaphragmatic breathing so diaphragmatic breathing is a very healthy method of breathing for any respiratory condition it also helps in reducing the levels of stress also so in this condition diaphragmatic breathing helps to relieve wheezing it reduces fatigue it also strengthens the diaphragm and intercostal muscles that is very important for patients with chronic bronchitis question 9 creating imaginary events to fill up memory gap is called dash a circumstantiality b neologism c confabulation d compulsion the right answer is c confabulation so what is confabulation so this happens when patient forgets something or the content is not available in the patient's memory so what they do is they try to replace it with some imaginary things this can happen in some disorders like anton syndrome or it's called blindness syndrome so what happens is patient might deny their blindness and they would tell that i saw this i saw that etc and in dementia patient might have forgotten some story that happened in the past so they would deliberately insert some imaginary things into the situation this term was coined by karl bonhoeffer in the year 1900 he used it to describe when a person gives false answers or answers that sound fantastical or made up this is also common in schizophrenia dementia etc question 10 anthracosis is caused due to inhalation of dash a coal particles b sugarcane dust c cotton dust d silicon dust the answer is a coal particles so anthracosis is also called as black lung disease it can be caused due to inhalation of coal particles most commonly it occurs in coal mines so early symptoms of this disease includes shortness of breath labored breathing coughing and production of sputum at this stage avoiding exposure can prevent the disease so as we saw the other options sugarcane dust can cause bagosis cotton dust can cause bicinosis and silicon dust can cause silicosis question 11 the appearance of burton's lines is seen in dash a pesticide poisoning b copper poisoning c benzodiazepine poisoning d lead poisoning and the answer is d lead poisoning so what happens in lead poisoning is the lead that is ingested or that has entered the body and which is circulating in the blood it combines with the sulfur ions that are present in the teeth and gums these sulfur ions are released by oral bacterial activity so what happens this lead and sulfur reacts in the mouth and leads to formation of sulfides these sulfides gets deposited in the teeth and gums causing purple lines so burton's line is nothing but blue purple lines on the gums a nurse working in an operation theater must know that the risk for hiv infection after needle stick injury is dash a 1 is to 100 b 1 is to 200 c 1 is to 300 d 1 is to 400 the answer is 1 is to 300 The risk for acquiring HIV after needle stick injury is estimated to be 0.3 if the status of patient is unknown. And for other infections like HBV it is 6 to 30% and HCV is 2%. The other name for Lloyd Davis position is dash. A Trendelenburg B head down lithotomy position C Sims position D prone position the answer head down lithotomy so what is this lloyd davis position it is also called as trendelenburg position with legs apart or head down lithotomy there is not much of difference between lithotomy and head down lithotomy so here the difference is the angle in lithotomy position the patient will be in uh, 180 degree and the legs will be flexed perpendicular here the head will be tilted 30 degree downwards and the hip will be flexed 15% extra the other name for developmental coordination disorder is dash a dyspraxia b dysphagia 
C. Dyslalia. D. Dyscalculia. The answer is dyspraxia. It is also known as developmental coordination disorder, a common disorder that affects movement and coordination. Dyspraxia does not affect the intelligence. It only affects the movement and coordination and skills that are required. For example, driving, balancing, playing some sport, etc. So the other points here are dysphasia, that is difficulty in articulation of speech. Dyslalia, again difficulty in comprehending and exhibiting speech. And D, dyscalculia, difficulty in calculation, especially used in numbers. So dealing with numbers will be difficult. Question 15. Diffuse purulent inflammation of a tissue is called dash. A. Abscess. B. Cellulitis. C. Boils. D. Ulcer. Answer. B. Cellulitis. So cellulitis is characterized by localized pain, swelling, tenderness, erythema and warmth. Cellulitis has been classically considered to be an infection without formation of abscess. So there will be no pus formation in cellulitis. And so what is the difference between cellulitis and abscess? It is cellulitis can diffuse, it can spread. Abscess will be localized. And other things here are boils. So boil is very small. It can happen superficially. It will also have some kind of pus inside. But it is very superficial. And ulcer is damage. So it is a damage thing. And cellulitis can spread. Abscess will be localized. So this is the end of Jipmer Norset series part 1. So we will try to post more videos for the learning purpose. Keep tuned in with our channel and start preparing more. Thank you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel so that my effort reaches you on time, all the time. All the best. Thank you.